And hello again, later the same day. I know, two videos in a day. Um, I have got, as you can see, more vases on the side. And I'm doing a party for my client who loves to fill her house with friends and family at the weekends. And I've made clips about her work I've done for her before. Um, but she's a really lovely regular client. And I think it's worth possibly thinking about for those of you who would like to be a florist like me, or for those of you who'd like to fill your house with friends and family for the weekend, uh, both. <laughs> um, how and why I make flowers for her. There is a budget, obviously, and we are repeating. So we don't want to make it boring, but we can't overspend. So we've got three matching large bouquets to make, eight small posies that will be dotted around the house in the bedrooms and so on. And the colour scheme, very calm house, is white. So, and it's the 1st of December. So these are all British grown flowers, 1st of December, a white scheme for a house full of friends and family. Let's start with the big arrangements. And as always, we'll start with greening them up. Come along with me and enjoy the ride. As you know, I'm a very big fan of Magnolia Grandiflora in a big arrangement. Look at that for structure. Yes, we'll start with the Magnolia Grandiflora. And I'm ruthlessly going to pop them in one, two, three each, like that. So each vase, each vase is going to have the same material. One, two, three. I may end up cutting these down a bit because they are so enormous, but I'm getting them in the vases. One, two, three. Gives me shape, structure, and size. One piece left over. Right, moving on. Let's have some big... Next. Bobbly ivy, anyone? And again. The same principle. One. And again, these I might pull down a bit. Two. Huge one counts as three in here. my material in to give me a base and then the base I could play housey housey with the base once I've got it one two two And this way of doing things is, I quite often get people saying to me that they wish that I would show them the whole process as I did it, but I have to say, if I did that, I expect you are now realising how extremely 
really dull and time consuming it would be to watch. Because I need to go along these and make sure they're all working. So I'm going to switch you off for a little while. I will promise you I will show you when I've got it all there. Next up, Grisolinia. And no, I am not re-snipping their stems. It is December. I could re-snip their stems, but they are made. This is all very strong, solid foliage. It'll sit for weeks in water quite happily. I could re-snip the stems, but I'm going to fly by the seat of my pants and just pop them in and they'll be fine. I know the light is quite dramatic, isn't it? But it will move round in a minute and you'll see them better. Look, I can make the light do funny things. Um, what is important is that the stems as they go into the water are clean because these are glass vases and dirty stems with bits of bruised leaves and things on them will just rot in the water in sunlight in their house and the water will go horrible colour and smell quite quickly. So this is really good strong foliage that will last, I mean I could put all of this in a, in a wreath on a door and it would last out of water, out of moss, and be perfectly right for weeks, but I don't want it to look ugly in the water. Very important, it's all about the detail. Next, so I've greened them up, and next, so I'll squeeze in here, I've greened them up, next going in is the Alstro, which you can see is in, still in pretty tight bud, lovely zingy green, not too Christmassy, <coughs> I beg your pardon, and again, I'm going to strip the leaves, and I'm doing everything in threes, three of each ingredient into the thing, it's quick, easy, organised. And the Alstro is not heavy foliage. It's not heavy foliage and won't last forever in water. It might last a good long time, but still, what it would really like is to have its stems snipped to keep the cellulose drinking cells open and efficient. So I'm going to snip them all off so that, pretty much the same length, so that the cellulose drinking cells are freshly open when I pop them into the vase. And you can't see the Alstro in there at all because it hasn't come out yet. So it'll be a jolly surprise for my client. Over the weekend, they will come out in her lovely warm house. That's the thing, you got to, the flowers I did this morning for the winter wedding, previous clip, needed to be out and ready for today. Whereas these flowers, A, they're going to be delivered tomorrow morning, but B, they need to last over the weekend and into next week. So they don't need to be super open now. They need to be ready to be super open over the weekend. Right, lovely Tanacetum Feverfew. Like, exactly like the Alstro, I'm going to cut a good chunk off the stems before I put it in so that the cellulose drinking cells are open and the flowers remain fresh over the weekend. Do you want to watch this bit? Okay. I get a lot of people, I get a lot of people saying that they wish they could watch the whole floristry thing. Maybe they think, maybe they think I'm not really doing it. Um, but it is quite long, I think to watch the whole floristry thing, especially when I have to reach over all these buckets of flowers to get into the vase. And one, tuck them in. One. Two, and they're literally three of each into each into each large vase. Stripping the stems, making sure it's all clean, so there's no manky mank, nothing manky in the water. There we go. 
go. And one more inhale. And one more in here. I like to I like to tuck the flowers sort of into the mix. I don't want the flowers to stand out. I want the flowers to look as though they're all growing together in a bit of a jungle. Um, right. Before you die boring, I'm, I'm going to turn you off. I'm going to put in the rest of the flowers, then I'll show you what I've done. So here they are with just the Tanacetum, the Elstro and the Snaps. And they're coming along quite nicely, but they need some sort of luxury feel. So we'll have some luxury coming up. Now, I know I said white and these are pink, but they're very pale pink. And when I pop them in the mix, they won't, I quite like to play with color and they won't, they, well, of course they are pink. They are definitely pink. There's no question and that one's snapped. However, they won't make the arrangement look pink. It won't look pinky. It won't look, what the client doesn't want is a sort of girly mix, which is uh, not an, uh, insulting to girls, um, but something that looks too, <sighs> she wants something straightforward and uncomplicated, like she is. But that very pale pink will sort of fade into it and I think work very nicely. And there we have three large arrangements matching exact same weight, exact same number of stems. But they don't look quite the same. Of course they don't because the stems are not necessarily exactly the same length, same level of openness and so on. But the principle is the same. Um, in the end, they've got five stems each of Snaps and Elstro. They're very simple, but now we're going to make but they're sort of stunning too. It's simple but stunning, which is what I would like to be in life. Um, and now I'm going to make the posies, which will have ranunculus. And I've looked at the ranunculus and I thought I might put it in these larger arrangements, but it'll just disappear and it'll be in the posies. And so you'll have that contrast. I'll show you. So shorter stems, again, working in threes. This is what the posies are going to look like. In my ordinary jars, I love a jam jar. We don't need to be fancy. The flowers are the wow factor, <laughs> I think. Um, working in threes, let's make eight of these. And then that's a house full. This is my client who likes ribbon around her jars. So ribbon she shall have, it's always easier if you're going to ribbon a jar, to do it before you put the flowers in. Top tip. The posies are coming on quite nicely. One tip, which you might like, is when I'm doing um, paper white narcissi or any very small headed flower in a posy, I might put two or three in together because then you see them. If you have them on their own, they tend to disappear a bit. Um, so I'll put my narcs, as we call them here at Common Farm, in together. There you go, top tip. There. I told you the light would improve. <laughs> slowly, slowly. I have one, one more posy to make, but the light is going really quickly. So I'm going to wrap it up because otherwise I'm going to have to put electric light on. And it's so ugly. Anyway. There we have three large arrangements and seven, nearly eight, lovely posies. If you're thinking of filling your house with flowers for the weekend, then having a repeating pattern like this, the posies aren't exactly the same, but they've pretty much got the same ingredients in and they are the same number of stems. There are about 20 stems per posy. And what that means is as they're laid out through the house, it's like having, you know, a really set of beautiful dining chairs that you keep, one in the hall, and, and you know, it's, it's a repeat pattern. 
and it's really, really attractive. And it's the same with the big arrangements. There'll be one in the drawing room and one in the library and one in the hall. And it sort of brings the whole house together and makes it feel warm and welcoming. So if you are thinking of filling your house with flowers for the weekend, along with friends and family, then eight posies like this really look fantastic dropped throughout the house because people see them, they don't sort of go, oh look, there's another one. It's just a sort of an effect that it has on the mind. It's very calming, it's very welcoming, extremely attractive. So well done, my client. Um, and if you're making posies like this, if you have a client, I appreciate some of you are pros. Um, and if you have a client who often fills their house with friends and family, then it's really worth talking to them about what they really, really like. And so I know my client loves this ribbon. Um, she doesn't like blue ribbon. So we often go for this sort of bronze because it goes with pretty much everything, but it also hides the top of the jars if she doesn't want it to look too jam jarry. Um, it gives a little flourish of uh, luxury to the whole look. Personally, I love a grow grain ribbon, a Petersham ribbon, it's very smart. Um, so I sometimes bring the changes with the colours, but because she has a regular order, I, you know, I buy this in bulk because it's cost effective for me and for her. Um, if you're going to do jars, I think having jars with square edges is attractive. Make sure they're completely clean. Um, but square edges catch the light and that is again fresh. I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's really important that the toes of your posy do not touch the bottom of the jar and that means the posy looks lighter. Even if it's quite a big heavy one, it is altogether a lighter. It's like a dancer dancing on its toes and that my friends is quite enough for now. Um, if you've enjoyed this clip please do subscribe to the channel, you can press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks we give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee. The link to coffee buying is in the blurb to all my clips. And it just reassures me that um, people enjoy the clips. <laughs> and so I keep making more. Uh, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you very soon. I think it's time for a walk around the garden in the December. So much to do. Ooh. Okay. Have a lovely eat. Have a lovely weekend, everybody.